Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Spear. 1940s and 50s. There was supposed to be a great latter rain movement. They call it the latter rain. They call it the manifested sons of God. Was it? They said it began at Azusa Street in the early 20th century. That under William Seymour, James Parham. But that was the beginning of the latter rain movement, was it? When we see in the Word of God that there will be in Revelation 10, Revelation 11, and Revelation 12, that there will be a great move of God for a time, times and a half, three and a half years, 42 months, 1,203 score days. This will be a time of great tribulation. We see that in Revelation 12. How do we know it's great tribulation? Well, simply because Michael has, has war in heaven against the dragon, the old serpent, the scorpion, the devil, and he's cast down to the earth having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. Well, how long a time does he have? Well, time, time and a half, three and a half years, 42 months of the great tribulation. Well, during this time, does God lift up a standard against him? Of course he does. He always does. When evil comes in like a flood, God is faithful to lift up a standard against him. The standard of the ones called by the name of Jesus Christ. And those are the ones that love up their lives unto the death. These are the ones that were sealed their testimony with their own blood. They are the witnesses, our mortars for Jesus Christ. When we see that in Revelation 10, Revelation 11, and Revelation 12 is the latter reign of the Holy Ghost. As we see in the book of Acts, has no amen on it. But we were told that the latter reign had already happened in the early 20th century. And it is morphed into the present day, name it and claim it, prosperity gospel. It's a lie. Not just the lie, it's a blatant lie, it's the strong delusion that many will believe and go after their pernicious ways, denying the only Lord God, professing a trinity doctrine of Christ, that there's one God but three persons in this Godhead. Now, when we take a look at that, they, everyone will say there's only one God. But the question is, where do you place Jesus? Is he at the right hand of God? Is the man not God? He's at the right hand of God. But God is spirit, and the man just has the spirit in him. It's called the God-man doctrine. Or many of the oneness doctrine believe is the same as the Trinitarian doctrine. There's one God, but three distinct persons in that Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, three personalities, which is wrong. That is why the last book in the Word of God is the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and signified it by his angel unto John. Now, before Jesus' first coming, he sent his messenger before his face, make straight the paths of the Lord, and John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah foreran Jesus' first coming as the Mahamashiach, Ben Yosef, the suffering Messiah. But now... We have the latter, the last revelation of Jesus, and that is the last coming, the second coming, the second advent, when the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first before that day comes. We are told in Malachi 4 that there will be a time that the Lord says, remember my servant Moses, behold, I send you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, before that day happens, the day of God Almighty. And I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And the Old Testament ends. Now, why is it in that order? Somebody said, well, we need to put it in... That chronological order, that's the wrong way. It shouldn't be in the King James Version or the SV or the other versions. It, it should be chronologically done. And we lose that effect and that judgment of God that 
in God's judgments. And why his judgments? Because when judgments are in the earth, men will learn righteousness. Righteousness is the revelation of Jesus Christ and his work, what he did. He that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, we do not are, and are not saved by the righteousness of the law. May be found having our own righteousness, but the righteousness of God by faith. And that faith has been dealt to every individual member in the body of Christ to accomplish the individual will of God and purpose in each individual believer's life. Then he will fitly frame it. Then he will compact it according to that measure of faith given to each part. God will do it. The Lord Jesus himself will place this body together and move it according to his will into the final unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We will grow up in him in all things and all truth so that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We're called for the work of the ministry. But the devil, as uh, always has been in the word of God before the true Real move of God comes. There's a false move. We see that in the book of Acts. Gamaliel talked about these that claimed to be the Messiah and some great thing that it came to naught. And he warned them that those that were coming against the apostles there to take heed lest they be found fighting against God. God will do a new thing, not revival as usual. It won't be church as usual because God will do the great thing. The last day reign of his power. It won't be a man. It won't be this bishop or the prophet or the apostle that does this. It'll be the broken members in the body of Christ of a broken and contrite spirit that do not seek their own glory, but to give him the glory, Jesus Christ, the only true God in eternal life. And they will lift him up. And when Jesus is lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. These are the ones that will, fill, will fulfill the law of Christ, bearing one another's burdens. They'll seek not their own, but that which is another. They'll condescend to men of low estate. They'll prefer their brother above themselves. They'll take heed to 1 John 3.16, Hereby perceive you the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we, each member in the body of Christ, are to lay down our lives for the brethren. We'll have that opportunity in the last days because, as it is now, the Christian church is hated, despised. Not only Israel, the natural Jew, but also the spiritual Jew, the ones that's had the circumcision of the heart and the spirit, Romans 2, 28 and 29. The last day Holocaust will be that against the body of Christ and against the nation of Israel. It will end in Armageddon. It will end with the destruction of the wicked. But before then, there's a work of the ministry. Before then, this gospel of the kingdom has to be preached in all the world for witness to all nations. Well, that's the latter rain, but we have not had the latter rain. We've had revivals. In Hosea 6, verse 1 through 4, come and let us return to the Lord. Why would we have to return to the Lord? Everybody says they know him now. Well, the Lord's a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, the self-existent eternal Spirit of God. Well, we are warned by the Lord himself in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, that in the last days, Jesus warned, many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, I'm anointed, and shall deceive many. And they will show great signs and wonders, insomuch if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Paul stated it. In his epistle, 
he stated that uh, in Acts 20, 28, in the book of Acts, as well as in the various epistles that he wrote, that in Acts 20, 28, about the one God and the blood of the Holy Ghost of God Almighty and his precious, incorruptible blood of the covenant. He said, take heed to yourselves and over all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. God's own blood. Holy Ghost blood. That means that God himself prepared himself a body that is him, manifest in the flesh and then humble himself to the death, the death of the cross. Now, that's where we jump track. And we see that this true Godhead, this true revelation of Jesus, this true manifestation of the true God and eternal life is now being revealed just as uh, the Lord said it would in the last days, uh, and there would be a great move of God through the judgment of God. All God's ways are perfect. All God's ways are judgment. The problem is, in Jeremiah 8, it says, But the stork knows their time. The crane and the swallow observe the time of their comings. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. All God's ways are judgment. And we find when judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness. And that righteousness is the revelation of the Father, who is Jesus, the only doctrine of Christ, that Jesus is that Christ, the Father of glory, revealed in the days of his flesh as a man, and then went back to his former glory as spirit. You'll see that in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. You'll see it in uh, the prophets. You'll see it in the Torah. There in the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4, the greatest commandment of all, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, not two, not three, one. That when the scribe asked Jesus, what's the first commandment of all? What's the dominant commandment? In Mark 12, 29, Jesus stated that that Shema. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy heart, soul, and might. And the second is likened to it, love thy neighbors thyself. From all this hang all the law and the prophets. That's one God. That's not a trinity. That's one. When we also see it again in the, uh, the prophets. Isaiah 43.10 very explicitly gives us that true revelation of Jesus and states, you are my witnesses, the true witnesses of God. Saith the Lord, that says the not some Bible college, not some seminary, not some doctorate of theology or doctorate of divinity. With this is thus saith the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty Himself. Isaiah 43 10, 43 10. You are my witnesses, the true witnesses of God. Thus saith the Lord. That's the self existent eternal spirit of God, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty and my servant whom I have chosen. Well, somebody said, well, that definitely is another person. Well, that's what we're told. It's not the truth, though. Why? Because God tells us himself that you may know and believe men understand I am he. I want you to know it. I want you to believe me, and I want you to understand the Godhead. There's only one that you may know. Believe me and understand that I am he, the Lord, is that servant. Then he explains how. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. Who is he? See now that I am God thy Savior, the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, no Holy Trinity. That's Isaiah 43, 15. We've jumped track. We've hewed out. Cisterns that can hold no water. Clouds that can hold no rain. These are trees twice plucked up by the roots. No, those that are seeking God with a pure heart, diligently seeking him, he's going to reveal his identity, 
It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto us the servants of God things which must shortly come to pass. Not only who he is in the person, but his work as well. If somebody asks you, do you know John Doe? And you said, yes, I know John Doe. And you say, well, what does he do? And you said, well, I don't know. Well, you, then we don't know John Doe too well, do we? We have to not only know the person, but we certainly have to know his work. Well, that's what we're called for. First thing, we have to know the person. Who is he? The one person of God, not a three-person God, but a one-person God is Jesus Christ, Jesus only. The blessed and only potentate, 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. That's a capital P, by the way, the Almighty God, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, nor see nor can see. Jesus is in that light. He is that blessed and only potentate. That is the revelation that he gives as his person in the revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book in the Word of God. That he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 1 8. We've missed that. Paul said we would. Acts 20 28, after he exhorted the body of Christ, take heed to yourselves. And over the flock, over all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Notice it didn't say Holy Spirit, it said Holy Ghost. It was one and the same. The Holy Ghost is the one Spirit of God. But when you say Holy Ghost, it denotes the blood of God himself. The blood there of Jesus, which is the spirit of a departed person, a ghost, the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, it really doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. The Word of God explicitly states the Holy Ghost that shall be given unto you. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be, Jesus said, my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the most parts of the earth. Well, that Holy Ghost denotes that person of Jesus uh, that shed his blood. Acts 20, 28, Paul states it very plainly. Take heed to yourselves and over all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost. He didn't say Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus has always been the Spirit of God and always will be the Spirit of God. But when he took on a body of flesh and blood and dead, died, buried, and rose again, then he mentioned it the Holy Ghost because it's the spirit of that person. It's the blood of God himself. It's Holy Ghost. You denote the blood that the Lord God himself provided himself a body in order to shed his own blood for the sin of the world, expiating all sins in our stead. He's a propitiation for our sin. Who is it? God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Now, we have lost that foundation. We've moved from it. There, over the years, uh, these uh, the ecumenical councils uh, and these different synods have said, that, well, there's three there. And uh, there are these three. The Son of God, that was... Uh, begotten of the Father before the foundation of the world, Spirit Junior. He's the one that came down and died for us. That's in the Chalcedonian definition in 451 A.D. You can get it and read it. In a three-person Godhead. One God, but three persons. Somebody said, well, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, it doesn't? Well, there's only one true God in eternal life. And Jesus stated, except you believe that I am he, the Father, you shall die in your sins. John 8, 24. Pharisees didn't get it. This understood not expected them of the Father. John 8, 27. God's doing it now. Now, Paul warned, take heed to yourselves and over all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost, that God that has put on a body of flesh and blood, added to himself the form of a servant, and that servant is God himself, the Lord of glory. Isaiah 43, 10 through 15 states that, a holy one. And he said uh, that Holy Ghost has made you overseers, that you feed the church of God, which he, not them, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 
Now, that short circuits with a lot of seminaries throughout the world that God has no blood. Well, yes, he does. Acts 20, 28 states he does. And he shed his precious, holy, righteous blood. And also, he was, Paul warned us in the very next verse, that he said, uh, after taking heed to ourselves, to feed the church of God, which he's purchased with his own blood, then he states, immediately after my departure, grievous wolves shall come in, not sparing the flock. Who among you, among the church, the church members themselves, will bring in perverse things, denying the only Lord God? He warned it. Jesus warned it. He warned us of this. Jude warned us. He said uh, that earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. This one God message that Jesus is that God of glory who made himself of no reputation, laid aside his glory, took upon him the form of a servant, that servant being God himself, and being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, to the glory of the Father. Jesus said in John 2, 19, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. No man can raise up raise up his own body from the dead, except he be God. Jesus did it. He's declared to be the Son of God through the Spirit by the resurrection from the dead. Romans 1, verse 3 and 4. Now, Jude stated, we are earnestly to contend for that faith. They knew who he was. There was only one God. Jesus Christ being that eternal God Almighty, the Spirit that made himself a body of flesh and blood and went back to his former glory as the Father, glorified by the Father's own self. Well, that's what Jude stated, that we're to earnestly contend for. Most don't even know what that is and certainly not proclaimed in the seminaries. Well, God's doing it, and he's doing it through his body that those that hear the true voice of the Holy Ghost, the voice of the Spirit, the voice of the Son of God. They're the ones coming together. Those are the ones that are moving in the body of Christ coming together, fitly framed together and compacted as one, according to the measure of each particular member, whichever joint supplies to the edifying of itself in love. Bone to bone makes the joint, the body of Christ coming together. That's the reason we need to hear from you. We have ministers all over the world right now. I'm bombarded with hundreds of emails a day stating they want this training in their nations. I cannot do this alone. I'm a servant. I pop the rag and shine the shoes. We have to come together as the body of Christ. We, those that are have this message, know the truth. We have a divine commission of God to carry this word, this gospel of this kingdom into all the world for a witness into all nations. Most go to their local churches and they're told they're saved and they may know that there's more, but they say, well, right now, we won't be proactive. We'll just sit back and we know what we know and the Lord will not require it of us. But to whom much is given, much is required. God will expect each one of us in the body of Christ to come together for that divine commission being preached to all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And we, the body of Christ, have to do that just as it was in the former reign of the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, that there was great persecution against the church and only the apostles were at Jerusalem. All the church uh, were scattered abroad whenever we're preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. So much that in so much that these that have turned the world upside down have come to our city also stated in the book of Acts. And God will do the same thing again in the latter reign. 
And after he's accomplished this, scatter the power of the holy people. Daniel 12. All these things will be finished. The wise shall understand these things. The wicked cannot understand them. They go to church, and they think, well, we're saved. It's an act, and there's nothing more. Not realizing that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the world for witness to all nations, and the body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God will carry that divine commission out into all the world. And just as he did it in the book of Acts, he will do it again in the latter rain, except this is the last great reign of his strength. We that sit idly by and do nothing will, not doing the will of God, will not have access to the kingdom of heaven. Somebody said, oh, wait a minute now. We're saved, sanctified, and we're on our way to heaven. Well, you better take a good look at it again. Because in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the constitution of the kingdom of heaven and the bylaws of the kingdom of heaven, it states very plainly, that Jesus said, and all of the saying to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter in only those that have done the will of God. Not just say, I know I should have, or I could have, or I would have, but no, the ones that did it, the ones that came together, the ones that lifted up Jesus in these last days. And then because they didn't, they professed under Jesus. They worked in the Holy Ghost. They were born again, and not only that, they were born of the water and the spirit, little uh, newborn babes, but they were little children. They had grown from newborn babies to little children, knowing that he is uh, the Lord of glory. They know that he is the Father. We see that in 1 John 2, 12 through 14. I write unto you little children, not babies. I write unto you little children because you've known the Father. They know that Jesus is the Father. But they didn't go and do the will of God. They did not come together. They didn't come to the unity of the faith. They didn't grow up into Jesus and all things and do the will of God according to the measure of each part, according to that measure of faith given to each individual member to do the will of God. They sat idly by, paid their bills, worked their jobs, and said, well, thank God we're able to do that, not realizing their call for the unity of the faith to come together in one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is the Father of us all, above all and in us all, for the work of the ministry. They did not know that. So he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. What then? For the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is what we're called for. And to that edific edification of the body of Christ and the welcome of the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. That knowledge of the Son of God is not gnosko, just knowing Jesus after the Spirit that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. We know he's the Father. But you know, growing up in him in all things and all truth, to do the will of God, to have to do it. Notice that in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, in that constitution of the kingdom of heaven, in Matthew 7, Jesus said that if we do not do the will of God, we do not have access into the kingdom of heaven. Now, they begin to profess unto Jesus, Lord, we prophesied in your name. They were sure they had the Holy Ghost. They say they did. They just didn't obey it all the way to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ and doing his will. He said, we have prophesied in your name. And in thy name, we cast out devils in thy name. We've done many wonderful works. Jesus didn't say they didn't. They were born again. But he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity, for I never knew you. Work iniquity, lawlessness. That is to be carnally minded. You have the spirit of God, but you keep a worldly mind. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Those that are born again are to set our affections on the things above, not on the things beneath. Most are wondering, well, how are we going to get through this, ecumen this, uh, uh, this economy and this geopolitical crisis that we're in? What are we going to do if the days that we see are approaching upon us, even as the Word of God states that we're going to be hated of all nations? We can see the one world globalists coming together, woke ideology and all the things that are against Christianity. 
We know it's there. But what do we do? Well, we unite the body of Christ then uh, through this time of great tribulation, the devil coming down to us having great wrath, the old dragon, the serpent, and the scorpion, that God seals his people in their forehead. And we see that in Revelation 7. That's what God's doing now. It's preparing us for the last great day. It's preparing, preparing for us in this last work of the ministry that we're all called for, Ephesians 4.11. Well, who hath an ear and know for the time to come? That's the reason that God is calling and moving very strongly upon the body of Christ now to those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Ghost is moving on us to come together into one. And the ones that do not, there will not do the will of God, will not have access or entrance into the kingdom of heaven, just as Jesus stated in Matthew 7. It is a critical thing that we do and obey the leading of the voice of the Son of God. Those are the overcomers. So it's not just being born again. We find that, and that we're born of the water and the Spirit. We repented, been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, Acts 2, 38, and we understand that name Jesus is required, Acts 4, 12, nor the name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. We know that. Then Acts 8, 8 16, we're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 10, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Household of Cornelius, born again. Same way in Acts 19, that those there uh, fundamentalists there, Paul came upon them, have received the Holy Ghost since you believe they were baptized under John's baptism with water under repentance. They did not know there was more. Paul preached to them the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and they received it, baptized in the name of Jesus. He laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost and prophesied, spake in tongues and prophesied. Well, all through the word of God. But now we're coming to the final, the finality. And that is the El Fene, the finish, the end. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. And what are we to do? We're to come together and the unity of the faith for the work of the ministry. And that's what God is calling us to do now. We have to come back to who Jesus is. Many of the Trinitarian doctrine ministers in Africa, India, uh, Pakistan, have uh, just flooded us with coming out of the Trinity doctrine, wanting uh, these training centers put up in their nations, yet Jesus-only training centers. We have a course for that, and we gave it to them as much as we can, but they have questions they want to go on in to the work of the ministry. We don't have the finances to do that, so all it takes a tremendous, not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands, or literally millions of dollars to do. And each trip that we go, as generally runs twenty to thirty thousand dollars just for a small team to go, and we have done everything that we can possibly financially in the leading of the Holy Ghost to do that. But now we, the body of Christ, must come together. We'll reach the world, not because of us, but because of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Word there it stated that this gospel will go forth in all the world for witness in all nations. It will, and we're not talking about a TV set either. We're not talking about social media. We're talking about in the, the gospel of Jesus Christ that those scattering the power of the holy people and that will be the revelation of Jesus Christ until the consummation where the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort you one another with, the, with these words. We understand that. We're coming back into the unity of the faith. Just as Jesus said, and let's contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Because there's been these men that's crept in unawares. That were foreordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men. Turned to the grace of our Lord Jesus into lasciviousness. Denying the only Lord God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. They deny it. Peter talked about it in 2 Peter. The second chapter said they're bringing in damnable heresies, denying the only Lord God. All of them said it, the same thing. Jesus stated it. The prophets of old stated it. 
there to the law and to the testimony. If any man speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If we abide not in the doctrine of Christ, 2 John 9, he had not God. The doctrine of Christ hasn't been taught. That Christ is that spirit who came down in the body of his flesh, made it, formed it, died, buried, rose again, went back to that former glory as spirit. The man Christ Jesus has been made a quickening spirit, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. That same Jesus that was crucified, God's made him Lord and Christ. That is Acts 2, 36. He is a blessed and only potentate, 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16. But now we're called for the work of the ministry. Greater than just knowing his person, we have to do the work. And anyone that does not do that work will not have access to the kingdom of heaven. So we simply do our part here in DVM, the Dennis Spirit Ministries and our team. We've sold out, and we have followed the Lord and everything we can to reach the nations with this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We knew that it was the last of the last days. All of us knew that. But then on the 19th of January, 2019, we had a visitation for the Lord after preaching to a Messiah tribal church in Transamerica, Kenya, Africa. And very basically, the Lord said, seal my people by my word. Even as I send my angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, so send I you. Now, we have done everything that we can on our part as servants to the body of Christ. There to lift him up. The body of Christ must come together to fulfill that commission. Not some big prophet, not some big apostle. That's where they missed it in the 40s and 50s. They thought they were some great thing of God. They are, that's where they missed it. He that speaketh himself seeketh his own glory. But he that speaketh of him that sent him, there's no unrighteousness in him. We are to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone, not any. John was that disciple that loved Jesus, would not even mention his name. He just said the disciple Jesus loved. Broken, humble, and contrite is what the Lord looks for. We can't sit back and do nothing. We need to hear from you. We need to meet together and carry out this divine commission. I look forward to hearing from you. There, there will be information at the end of this podcast. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Let us hear from you. Now, we're praying for every one of you, all of us, that God will perfect that which is lacking in each one of us, that we all may be presented blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in both spirit, soul, and body. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus. Yes, brethren, we're in the last of the last days. All know that. All that studied any eschatology at all know that. But where are we as far as the body of Christ coming together in the true revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the last book in the Word of God? The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified it by his angel unto John. We, the body of Christ, have to come together. Those of you that know the voice of God, you know the voice and are led by the Spirit of God. You are the sons of God. You are the ones that God has called for this last day work of the ministry. That last day work of the ministry is through the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for this gospel to be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. For us to come together is critical. I want you to contact me. We need to work together. We've had more downloads on Feeling God's People on our daily podcast than ever before. We know that there are the listeners that know the Spirit of God. You're led of the Holy Ghost. You are the sons of God. And God dealing with all of us to come together as one. So I put it before you. Contact me. We have several different contacts there on uh, social media. Of course, the daily podcast, Sealing God's People, there, simply download the app, tune in daily, as many of you are doing, up in the thousands down. We thank God for you. We need to move. We need to come together. There, you can email me at sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. Again, my email address, 
sailinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. You can also help send this gospel for the Jesus-only training centers throughout the world where the ministers are crying out for it. They're at dennisbeard.org, our website there, promoting our e-books. There are seven e-books there, and four of them do with the Godhead, uh, that God is moving uh, many out of the false doctrine of Trinity into the true revelation of Jesus Christ, the true God and eternal life, Jesus, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent Spirit of God, Jesus' only doctrine of Christ. We have four books on the Godhead, Behold the Real Jesus, Christ, the Revelation of the Son of God, Hear, O Israel, and uh, the Eras of the Trinity. These four go into detail about how God works salvation in and of himself. Our God, Jehovah, is our salvation, Jesus. Also, why it is so essential for the soul out in the last days, uh, selling out and why the word of God in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven commands us to sell out. That is uh, an essential for the true Christian. There we also have the great deception, the 603 score and 6, the keys of stigma, exactly what it is, and the manifested sons of God, the true doctrine of the manifested sons of God, which that has been watered uh, down through the 1940s and 50s, saying that it was some great person that was going to lead the body of Christ instead of a body ministry. The work of the ministry is the church of the living God coming together in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God uh, unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There, Dennis Beard, we have received uh, a visitation from our Lord Jesus Christ on the 19th of January, 2019. Many of you have heard that already. While in trans Kenya, Africa, saying, Seal my people by my word, even as I send by angel ascending from the east, having this seal of the living God, so send I you. Now this is not for any of our righteousness or our holiness that the Lord spoke this to me. It is the body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith. And well, it's a call there for the body of Christ to come into one mind and one accord now. Please contact me. Some of you are not called, uh, all are called for first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, uh, governments, helps, but all, each individual member of the body of Christ has a specific call for us to do for the body of Christ uh, to fulfill the will of God in these last days with the gospel of the kingdom being preached into all the world for a witness in all nations. So we implore you, please contact me so we can uh, meet where we can work together. Africa is crying out. We have over a thousand ministers in Africa that have left the false trinity doctrine into the true doctrine of Christ. Not only that, but India, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, uh, New Zealand, it's on and on that the ministers are crying out, we need your help. They're asking for the Jesus only training centers to be placed in their nations. We feel the call to do that, but we can't do it alone. It takes us, the body of Christ, coming together. And God will literally put it together and uh, then compact it. Uh, whichever joint supplies to the edifying of itself in love, the body of Christ will come together. And as the Lord has dealt with you individually, and you know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost, you know that there is more in the body of Christ for us to do in the will of God, then please contact me. The information is on your screen. There, DennisBeard.org is our site, website. We also have sealinggodspeople.org, sealinggodspeople.com. For those of you that would like to get our daily uh, ministry, uh, I get notices there what we're doing. You can go to JCIC 
jcinternational.tv. That's Jesus Christ International Church.tv. The abbreviated jcic.tv. Join up with us, and I will write to you individually on that website. It's made for the ministers worldwide. There, you simply uh, join up uh, where you're from, and uh, then you will get notices and the daily podcast as well as the streaming and these uh, broadcasts will be uploaded for you there as well as questions and answers as well as blogs we need to come together again contact me you can also write me that is dbm dennis beard ministries post office box 2906 longview texas zip code 75606 don't procrastinate. You that know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost leading. Don't procrastinate. Do it now, and I'll look forward to meeting you. Till the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus.